Scandinavia's smallest country, Denmark, has a big reputation for its quality of life, and here in Copenhagen, the mood is vibrant. The country has a reputable welfare state, in which citizens like Edis Sadilovic, who is visually impaired, are offered equal opportunities. He's not been able to see since he was two, but an innovative Danish invention has offered him and many others greater independence and self-sufficiency. It's called Robo Braille and was developed by the Danish Centre for Visual Impairment, Sign Centre Refsnes, in region Zealand. Pioneered by Lars Christensen, it translates electronic documents into Braille or speech. The user attaches a document that can be virtually anything, like an HTML file, a Word document, a PDF file, a scanned image, uh, submitted as an, as an email to an email account, it's received on the server and then the result is returned to the user by means of an email and everything happens in a matter of minutes. That's great news for Edis, who like many is a regular user of the service, which is free to non-commercial users. Translated documents can be read through his tactile braille display or simply downloaded as an MP3 file and played through his PC. It's not that difficult to, to learn and it's very accessible for blind people as it should be. <laughs> we read a lot in, in the school so sometimes I get tired of reading so <clears throat> I get it returned in, 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 in speech. Rika Subair is one of the project managers working on ways of further developing the Robo Braille service. It helps them to access a lot of uh, documents that wouldn't be accessible um, without Global Braille, and I would say especially the PDF files that we introduced as something new. Depending on the document size, translations can happen swiftly. As an example, Lars sends a press release via email for translation into speech, and within seconds it's returned. Today, the Danish-led Robo Braille consortium announced that it had added support for French speech to its Robo Braille service. The addition takes the number of supported languages to seven. At present, some thousand documents are translated each day, but the mission is to reach a capacity of some 14,000. Consultant Sven Thogard has been with the project since its inception. He has an accomplished understanding of the many different types of Braille and has helped develop the system, which can even translate whole books, including a request for the latest Harry Potter. It was about 500 pages translated to Robo Braille. And when Robert Bray sent it back, there's also a report. And it took 42 seconds to con contract the latest Harry Potter book. While the developers will continue to offer the service for free to individuals, they create income through commercial applications of the product. As the pharmaceutical sector, they need to put Braille on their boxes now. That's a, a European directive from the Commission that, that actually mandates that. So also we are seeing requests from, uh, the, from uh, financial institutions in order to be able to produce like bank statements and annual statements and so on in Braille. Denmark is rightly proud of its homegrown invention and as a winner of the European Commission's e-accessibility award, the project's value has been recognised at the highest levels, including in the government which has offered the project grants to help meet the needs of the dyslexic, immigrants and others who need help with reading. I think the, the value is um, enormous uh, because you with uh, very simple and few um, uh, tools uh, can help a lot of people to improve their daily life. The Robo Braille project was also given high praise for its commitment to digital literacy by the European Commission. Technology can in itself be even off-putting, but what the award winners were able to do was to grasp the technology, put it where it's really needed and help the people with their everyday lives and that's the real value. And it's not just the citizens of Denmark. The project's future lies in exploring the document conversion technology beyond, particularly in continents where there are low literacy levels. The need for a service like Robo Braille is even bigger when we venture into the developing world, like the, the, the Arab countries or countries uh, like Ghana, uh, Mozambique, South Africa and so on. The future lies in making Robo Braille commercially sustainable by attracting more institutional users. At the same time, it's continuing to provide an invaluable tool for people like Edis.